Hello, my name is Ricardo. I'm from the Monterey Institute of Technology on the Mayas program, and today I'll be explaining Berstow's method, a root finding algorithm for numerical methods. In 1920, Sir Leonardo Berstow was the first to publish Berstow's method, which is a root finding algorithm that is mostly based on polynomials. A general overview for this method would be that it is based on reducing any polynomial to quadratic equations. That would be, for example, if we would have x to the 5, we would reduce it to x squared times x squared times x. We would reduce it by using synthetic division. It also uses Newton's method to calculate the roots of quadratic equations and uses the quadratic formula to find these roots. And it also finds all the roots of the functions, including complex roots. This all might seem a little bit complex, but after seeing our first example, I'm sure everything will be a little bit more clear. These are the steps for finding roots with Berstow's method. For the first quadratic equation, we will find the function of x, which is the original equation, ro, which is the initial guess of r, and so, which is the initial guess of x. Then, we will try to find f2. This equation is a bit complex to find and overall it's very time consuming. It will be done using these equations, which I will explain on a later part of this video. And after that, you will calculate the roots of f2 of x using the quadratic formula. For the following quadratic equations, we will calculate f of n minus 2 of x, which we will calculate using synthetic division. If this equation is of third order or higher, we would go back to step 3. If it's of second order, we would solve it using the quadratic formula. And if it's of first order, we would just clear the equation to solve for the root. This might all seem a bit complex and a bit abstract. But again, when we see the example, this will all be a lot more clear. Before that, I want to remind you that a polynomial of n has n roots. For example, x to the 4th has 4 roots, and x to the 7th has 7 roots. Th this is a common mistake using Berstow's method, because people tend to think that after calculating the first two roots, we don't have to calculate anything else. However, we have to find all the roots of an equation. Here, I am also reminding you that x to the 7th would be x squared times x squared times x squared times x. That basically means we would be using Berstow's method, or step 3, 3 times. Equations. These are the equations that we will need to calculate Berstow's method. First, we have this set of equations that would depend on the order of the polynomial n. Basically, it, can all com it all comes down to the three equations on the left. However, this is a pretty complicated way of seeing it. I prefer showing this order 4 case, where I have a polynomial x to the 4th plus x to the 3 plus x squared plus x plus another constant. We would start by writing the numbers before the x on the left side below the a, then we would calculate b. The first b is equal to a of n, then we add r to the one below, and then we would add r and s to all the other ones below. And basically the same thing would be for the c. Now, it seems a little bit strange, but again, the example would be a lot more clear. Something that I want to emphasize with this equation is that there are no shortcuts in Berstow's method. You really have to calculate everything shown here. Of course, if I would have a polynomial of order six, I would start with a6 and a5 and then a4, a3, a2, a1 and a0. It's a very time consuming method, however, there are no shortcuts, believe me, if there were, they would already be used. After having calculated c1, c2, c3, b1 and b2, we will use this equation to try to solve for delta r and delta s. After solving for these, we would add this to the original r0 and s0 to calculate the new r. Again, there are no shortcuts. With the new r and a new s, we will calculate the approximate error, like any other error in numerical methods. When the tolerance is reached, 
basically when the error is smaller than the tolerance. We will use the last coefficients r and s to calculate the roots using this equation. However, you'll need to iterate many times before this happens. That's why this is such a long method to do. After calculating the new quadratic equation with x squared minus rx minus s, we will divide the original equation with this new equation. This division must result with no remainder or a very small one. And again, if it's of third order, we would go back to step three. If it's of second order, we would use we would solve this new equation with the quadratic formula to find the other two roots. And if it's of first order, we would just clear the equation to sort for the extra root. Now, the example. For this example, I chose x to the fourth minus x minus 10 with initial values of r and s to be 0 0.1 and a tolerance of 5%. If you're not given any initial values, you can guess them yourself. So for this problem, x to the fourth minus x minus 10, we have an initial guess of r of 0.1 and an initial guess of s of 0.1 with a tolerant value of 0 0.05. To be honest, this example is going to take very long because the initial guesses aren't as good. So it's going to take many iterations. I'm just going to show you how to do the first one. So what we will do first is that I'll write my order of the equation here. This will help me later. And now I'm going to start by adding the A values. My A values will be basically the number before or the coefficient. So since we don't have an x to the 3, it would be 0. Same for x squared. We have a minus 1 here and a minus 10. So this will be the same for all, um, for all iterations. Now, for the b value. As I said before, the, this first one would be a4 equals to b4, which would be equal to 1 in this case. Then we would do the same thing. 0 plus, and this will be r b4, which would be 0 0.1. So this will be equal to 0.1. And for this one, and for all the other ones, it would be 0 plus r plus b3 plus s, which happens to be the same as r, plus b4. That, I mean times b4, uh, which in this case is 1. So, um, basically... You'll be doing this for every iteration, and uh, once you once you get past the first two, it'll be the same thing basically. Now it's 0 0.11 because it's this one plus 0 0.1 times one. No, I'm sorry, 0 0.1 because it'll be this one. So we'll have 0 0.979, I believe. And then we'll do the same here. So basically, these values will be known as B4, B3, B2, B1, and B0. So as I said before, um, basically for the... We're calculating this because we want to know um, B0, B1, C1, and C2 you know, for the delta R and delta S equations. So, um, 
that's why I always want to calculate these two values so there's that's why I'm saying you don't need I mean there are no um, shortcuts for this and basically for the C it'll be the same thing but instead of taking the A we'll be taking our B now so this will be the same it's gonna be 1 here it's gonna be 0 0.1 plus Uh, no, this will be, well, 0 0.1 times 1, it will be 0 0.2. So, uh, it's a very long method, but it's basically a guaranteed convergence. This will be 0 0.23. I'm taking the last B. times s 0 point negative 0 point 0.936 okay so again this would be my c4 c3 my c2 and c1 since the equation doesn't ask me for my c0 i can avoid doing that and uh, a small clarification if I were to have as an extra example if I were to have an I don't know an x to the 6 minus 5x squared basically my a's I would always start from my first one and I would have 5 4 3 2 1 0 and then I would go you know in this case 1 oh no, I'll give it 10 here 0, 0, 0, minus 5, 0, 10. So this will always be the same. But uh, that's why this, in theory, would be to calculate B6, B5. But we will always need the same values. B1, B0, and C1, C2, and C1. So uh, that's how you would do it with larger um, polynomials. And uh, for this case, what we will do now would be a be equal to 0 0.23, 0 0.936, 0 0.2, 0 0.23. This will be equal to 0 0.979. This is because of the equations. Basically, this will be 0 0.23 delta r plus 0 0.2 delta s is equal to 0 0.979, which is b1, and negative 0 0.936 um, plus, no, delta r plus 0 0.23 delta s. It's going to be equal to 10.0869, again, because of the equations. Now what we need to do is find delta R and delta S. It's basically, since we just have two equations, it's just going to, it's just going to be making one equal to, I don't know, making everything equal to delta R or, or to delta S. Just to save some time, I'll, I'll, do, I'll just give you the answer, which would be negative 7.46443 one five and delta s thirteen point four seven nine oh zero six two oh nine six two and um once you have this you calculate r one by adding r zero plus delta r and the same for s so uh the new r will be seven point negative seven point three six four and S1. Now, to do the errors, it's going to be as any other um, numerical method. The error of R1 would be the absolute value of our new value minus our old value over our new value times 100. 
which for this case would be 101%. You can always have an error bigger than 100. And our error for R2 will be our new value. I mean, for S1 would be 13.579 minus 0 0.1 over 13.579 times 100 which would be equal to 99%. So basically, we would have to keep iterating until we get an error that is less than our tolerance, which for our case would be 5%. So this will take around 10 iterations. And what this means is that since I have a new R and a new S, I would do the same thing over here so for example this one would be the same but this one would be 0 plus 0 0.1 times negative 7 so that would be it and and now I'll show you how this problem ends now I did the same example in Excel using the same problem and the same initial conditions and uh, as you can see the a value will not change unless of course you're working with another equation and I'm also leaving the Excel formula so that you can see what I multiplied and what I added now the A matrix I had to multiply it by the inverse so that I could get it to calculate the Delta R and Delta S I took around 10 iterations to solve this problem but here you can see that I have an error below the tolerance value which was of 5% so this might be a condensed version I calculated the delta R's and delta S until I got to R10 so I iterated 10 times and now with these values I will calculate the roots since it's a plus and a minus I will get two roots which are these ones and um, this way I calculated the new x squared which I will now divide so I divided the original polynomial by the new polynomial that I found and uh, I would recommend you try to conserve as many decimals as possible so by using what is known as synthetic division I won't be explaining it in this video but you can find many videos of it online I found a new equation a new x squared and since we could see on the other steps since this is uh, an order 2 equation we would just find the roots like any other quadratic equation so this would be th the third and the fourth root so these are the two roots I found on my first two equations and um, these are the results on Wolfram Alpha as you can see they are very similar to the ones I found. This would be the graph of the equation. Obviously, we would have to include the the imaginary roots, but as you can see, it's a very useful method. So, thank you guys for watching. If you have any other questions, I'd be willing to answer them on the comment section and thank you for listening.